And if you don't pay attention to the shop, yeah, the business is going to go bad. You don't pay attention in the street, you're going to get your fucking head blown off or you're going to go to jail the rest of your life. Right. I'm ready. I'm I'm rolling. I'm rolling, yeah. I think we are ready. Fucking <laughs> asshole, all the time. I got you. Tighten up, son. Yo, what up? It's your boy, Mr. Freestyle 340. And it's your man, man, Ruby, here with No Limit, No Bounty Podcast. Man, we got a special, special guest in the building today. We got my man, Thad, in the building. Mr. Thad. If y'all, if y'all know any history in Reading, Y'all know this guy right here. For sure. Yeah, you know I mean, he 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 has a lot to say. He's had he he got a story to tell. Okay, okay. And he's doing it right now. You know what I mean? Absolutely, Mister Thad. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Thad. What's what's going on in your world today? What you got going on? Same old same. Just trying to maintain, make a dollar out of fifteen cents, like we talked about earlier. Yeah. Earlier, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Born, raised here, right Redding, here PA. in Reading, PA. Yep. Word. Long, long time ago, but how yeah, was, right here from Reading, PA. How was how how was that living here, Reading, growing up here in Reading, PA? I think it was great. It was great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's pretty regular town. Obviously, I think it's a melting pot of a town. It yeah. always has been, but I think a great place to live yeah. from the city to the suburbs. Yeah. So, yeah. like like I mentioned a few uh, episodes ago, um, I've, I've been visiting here from the early '90s, so. Mm-hmm. I knew I knew the vibe that Reddit had, like <laughs> what it was for. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. like versus what it is now. You know what I mean? Right. No, but it no. still it still has a lot to give. You know what I mean? Reddit Reddit is it, it just the people around. You know what I mean? It's no. the vibe. And, I mean, we we've discussed before. It has changed a lot. You know it what I'm saying? You know, and it, just like with any city, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's for the worse, sometimes for the better. Right. But you know what I'm saying? It seems like uh, Reading has been changing and, you know, trying to get better in a sense uh, for the right direction. Um, and only time will tell. I mean, I listen, like I said, I moved here maybe about like 10 years ago. Okay. So I wasn't born and raised here. You know what I'm saying? But I know you've been here for a long time. Absolutely. So you've seen life. the changes. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? What, what do you see going forward, man, in this in the city? Um, Reading's always been a city, I think, that... um. Even though it is a diversity, I think everybody's always had each other's backs in this city. If if, if Redding's back is against the wall, it, you know, you see those T-shirts, Redding versus everybody or whatever. <laughs> so, Redding, it, it really is like that. I mean, even in the business world, it's like that. In the criminal world, it's like that, too. You don't see really people come from out of Redding and do things in Redding. Mm, it's yeah. the people from Redding. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to come to this town and just think you're going to set up shop. But uh, No, it's always been a, a rough city, but it's a blue-collar city, um, mm. you know. I, I don't know if you guys remember, you said 10 years ago you came here. I don't know how long you've been here. At one point, Reading was voted, I think, the poorest city in yeah, the nation. But, yeah. The yeah. poorest city. That's crazy. We yeah. spoke about that. The poorest the city in the nation yeah. is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Think about all the places in this country that you could go, and Reading was the poorest one. Yeah. Not for nothing. I think I tried. I think Reading is still like 12 or 13. I'm sure it's it is. It's, yeah, still, it's still, still up there. there. It's, still yeah. up there. No, it's gotten absolutely. better. Absolutely. And that's what I'm saying. That's that's what you want to see. You want to see the absolutely. change. You want to see the progress. Yeah. I'm saying, but it did, you know, to see it flourish, you know, and change, man, it's been, it, it's been good. Um, I came out here, you know, pretty much blind, not blindsided, but like I came out here on a wing and a prayer. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's there's hardworking people out here. There's good people absolutely. out here, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Good people. Hard workers, you know what I'm saying? Who, for sure. You know, just want to do good. families have been here for hundreds of years. Yeah. 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 So, I originally introduced by E Barber 828, my man Eric, you know what I mean? Another historian here right. in Red and PA. Absolutely. As the shop clown. Yeah. As everybody. <laughs> my old head, man. Let my old head, my old head live, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but as everybody know, E Barber 828, Burks County Barber Expo, I mm. originally met him through Eric, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. In the barbering. Um, what brought you into barbering when you first started in the beginning yeah mm. wow yeah i'll give you a little i'll give you a little reading history lesson um back in the early 90s there was a, a youth like a kid gang here it was called the first team and they had uh, wrote an article in the paper about it 
And it said it was the first gang in Reading that crossed all racial and economical barriers, which really basically just mm. means it wasn't all white kids, it wasn't all black kids, it, was all Sp- it wasn't yeah. all Spanish kids. It was a mix of kids. Yeah. And those kids tended to hang around my house when I was growing up. And this is late 80s, early 90s, when getting fresh was, that was everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was just, it started out with just, we talked about this too before, where it was just a line. Yeah, yeah. You just had a shaved line and then had no yeah. shape up, no nothing. Yeah, yeah. But around this time, when this gang was formed and, and you have this whole group of kids, they were at my house and this was time to get fresh. So I started doing the line and then eventually fades came in, started doing fades. Mm. And um, my father and my uncles always went to Mike and Joe's. And Joe has a son named Frank that's also a barber. I don't know if you met him. After I would cut at my house, I'd go to Frank's and I would just watch. And he would show me little things. And then Joe from Mike and Joe's would come and he would show me things. And my first year cutting hair actually was with Joe's son, Frank. That's the most, he was the best teacher I ever had. Right. Um, Joe is a great teacher, but he is right on you when you're learning. Yeah. Frank was more relaxed and he was more my age and he taught me how to cut hair. And the first year I worked, I worked with Joe's son, Frank. Mm-hmm. After that, Joe came to me and asked me if I wanted to buy Mike and Joe's from him, which was really the plan from the beginning. And I ended up buying Mike and Joe's when I was 20 years old, 21 years old, something like that. wow. So one's own Mike and Joe's. Absolutely. It was me and Mike in the beginning. What was that experience like? Um, young, young business yeah, owner. Well, I mean, in the, 21. In, yeah. Mm-hmm. In the, Back in the, then it's not, it wasn't like it is now you go around the city. Now there's a million barbershops with young yeah. guys. Yep. There was nobody young here doing it. Then the only other one was Sam De La Cruz who owns the barbershop. Now Charlie Haynes, he was here too. Those are the only two young barbers I can remember. I mean, it was great. Yeah. I was working with Frank at a much slower paced barbershop. When I came into Mike and Joe's, it was it was maddening. Yeah. We were doing, you know, 20, 30 haircuts a day. And um, before I came to Mike and Joe's, I always had one foot in the barbershop, but one foot in the street. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, Mike and Joe's made it a lot more easier for me to be in the street because of where it's located. <laughs> um, right in the hood. Right yeah, in the hood. <laughs> no, it, it was one of the best experiences of my life. And it's been established. So Mike and Joe's has been established years. 60 years. 60, 63. 63, 63 yeah. Wow. 63 years. Yeah. This year, I learned this from the original Mike and Joe, and wow. then when Joe retired and went and worked with his son, he passed away a couple yeah. years back. Mike is still here. Um, you know, I took over Mike and Joe's, and it was me and Mike for a long time. Wow, man, that's crazy. I, I knew that it's been mm-hmm. you know established yeah. here for a long time. It's I didn't know that years. long. That's it's crazy, the second, man. Sec- uh, second longest lasting barbershop in PA. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy, right? That's crazy. We've seen, yep. we've seen great grandfathers, grandfathers, fathers, sons, all the way down the line. That's Generations insane, of man. Yeah. That's, That's dope, though, man. That's when dope, you, man. When you hear people say, you know, the 1206 and Mike and Joe's is a family, yeah. it really is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. That's dope, man. Yeah. But what 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 made you step away from barbering, though? Because um, I know, I know you, was, you was at the barbershop for a little time, and like you said, you... It made it easier to keep one foot outside of, right. of the door. Right. What really made you step away from barbering? Um, unfortunately, this. I'm the type of person that if you're going to succeed in life, you have to do something a thousand percent. It has to rule your life, just like Eric. Correct. Eric has given up some family things in his life, some things with his, you know, personal things, so he could be at that shop. Right. You, if you want to succeed in life, you have to do that. You have the to. problem was, I had the shop. But I also had another job, and that was being a criminal in the street. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you don't pay attention to the shop, yeah, the business is going to go bad. Right. You don't pay attention in the street, mm-hmm. you're going to get your fucking head blown off, <laughs> or you're going to go to jail the rest right. of your life. Right. It wasn't, when you sent me these questions, you had that one question, what made you fall out of love with barbering? I never fell out of love with it. Mm. I, won, I couldn't go to that barber shop and continue cutting hair and continue the other things I was doing. And unfortunately for me, this was more important. The street was more important to me than the barbershop at the right, time. Right. Um, and the reason I stepped away was once I knew Mike and Joe's was in good hands, once we got Eric, because Mike was already on the way out at that point. Right. And, you know, I put them in a bad spot. I would leave for three, four hours. I had a type of element coming into that shop that was, <laughs> you know, it was fun, but they, also yeah. that turns some people away. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't want to be around yeah, that kind of stuff. That energy, that yeah, no. that energy. No, it, 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 
it, it um but runs no, away business. It runs I mean, away the business. reason I stepped away and like I said, it didn't have anything to do with falling out of love with barbering ever. It, it, it more uh, I had to pay attention to what was going out here, or I would have got killed or right went to jail. Yeah. So couldn't be couldn't be two places at once. Yeah. No, no. And at yeah. the time, stupidly, you're thinking, okay, I can go to this barber shop and make two, two you know, two grand a week, twenty five hundred. We got fifteen grand on, on the basketball game that night. What do you think I'm going to care about? Twenty five hundred a week or the fifteen thousand on the basketball yeah. game that night, and the twenty thousand on the next one? Yeah. Fifteen. So, fifteen thousand. <laughs> yeah. 15, for you. Sign me up. <laughs> but I, I mean, you can't you can't focus on that business and maintain that business there. I couldn't do it, and that's why I stepped away. Right. Mm. But it was never a, a situation where there was no love for the for Barbara. I still have love for Barbara. You know I come in there and see you guys and, and try to mm. stay up with the latest trends and everything. All the time. And Every, every so often, do you still uh, grab the clippers? You know what once, in yeah, once, once in a while. Once in a while. Once in a while. And I, I hear you mention 1206, <laughs> like, <laughs> a lot. It's every, on my hand. <laughs> all, like, you got it tatted on your hand. What, Absolutely. What does that tattoo mean to you, though? 1206 is, is the address of Mike and Joe's, 1206 Schuylkill Avenue. Right. And like we talked about, it's been there for 61 years. Mm. I've been blessed enough that I've got to travel all around this country and all around the world. And I've stopped it. I try to stop at whatever town I'm in. The barbershop that's, that's dope or cool or who, who's doing the coolest shit out of a barbershop in your city. Send me there. Dang. And I'll check it out. And there's so many cool shops all over the world, not only in the United States, but other places but 1206 is different. It really is. It's 60 some years we're over there in the projects. The stories that could come out of there from just from Mike and Joe, they were two immigrants that came here off the boat yeah. and they were working up the street and they weren't getting paid no money, but everybody went to them and they conspired and were like, let's get our own spot, go yeah. down the street. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did right across from the project. And then I came and Although they're maybe not the best stories to motivate people, there's a million stories from when I was there. Yeah. I mean, I would get there in the morning at 9 in the morning. I would go home at 11 at night. We had a casino upstairs, and I would be taking the calls as soon as I was done cutting hair. I lived on that. twelve. I literally lived <laughs> 12 at 1206. If you wanted to find Dad from the years of mid-'90s to the mid-2000s, just, just come to 1206. Yeah. I'm there. And believe me, the stories still go on. I believe because, me, I know they do, and that's bro, and, part of what and, I'm trying to do. And not only, not only the 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 clientele that comes in there now, versus because we're literally across the street from the projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You would think that it's it is a hood ass shop, but you would think no. that it's like the hood in the barber shop, bro. No. The the people no. that come in there, Mike and Joseph has always had a mix of. Lawyers, lawyers, doctors, mm. police officers, police, judges, thieves, yeah. cocaine dealers, <laughs> everything. and every, everybody, and everybody sure. pulling up in there yeah. comes into that <laughs> shop, and that's one of the thing, reasons why that shop was so special. Uh, that you know, there's not too many places where a judge is going to interact with a kid from the projects, but it happened a lot at Mike and Joe's, and it made for some funny stories and, and fascinating. You know, interactions, interactions <laughs> between people, and like I said, that is why it's a family. If you know. You know, because you're there now. Yeah, hey, yeah. Hey. Eric is, and, and the people that come in there. That's, that's my brother, man. That's my guy, bro. Like Depending like, pain in the ass sometimes. He, either. he, no, he is, okay. but he is, but that's, that's your why, yo, that's When my the chips guy, are down, man. I guarantee yeah, you, he's the first person for sure. to have your back. And for that's sure. everybody that comes into that shop really is in that family. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, before you got there, and I know you know about this, customers that have passed away or customers that yeah. have been sick we have always tried yeah. even when I was there when we were doing bad things out of the shop we'd always try to help that customer yeah. or if family across family the street member, stuck yep. something anything. everybody gets stuck yep. it can't go to the bank yep. come over to the barbershop and pay your rent yeah. get back to me when you can pillar the but, community bro dope, man. really yeah. really so, yeah. but, I mean, there's good men to be giving back man especially being established for so long man if you have that, con have that connection deep. With the city around you, man. Absolutely. Because like you said, not for nothing, it's not in the greatest location in the city. No. But it's been it established been. for so long. But it's, it never has you know been. I mean? But still the people will come. No matter where you're from in Berks County, right. you, there's people I from. I ain't going to hold you. When I first moved out here, I lived on Schuylkill Ave, mm -hmm. right? I lived a little bit down the block. Mm -hmm. And they used to drive up, and I'm like, I was looking for a barber. Before I knew this cat, <laughs> <laughs> and I would drive by the shop. I'm like, but man, I stopped in that shop. I don't trust that. You know what I mean? Because. Without you knowing, you're like, damn, it looks kind of sus. Absolutely. But 
And, but once you're inside once you're and inside, you know the yeah, people yeah. and you know the clientele, you're in the safest spot in the world. Definitely, man. For definitely. Real. I get that, that. I give credit, man, to the shop, man. It, it's been. But you know I mean, going there, and getting cut there, man. You know, Eric's a there, trip, man. There's, there's always never, a good vibe I mean, in, in there. In the sixty some years that we've been in, in business, uh, unless it was an incident brought in there by myself, mm -hmm. there's never been a robbery, a violent act, or anything take place to any of the customers in there. That right. that, that building, twelve oh six, has always been respected by that block, mm -hmm. you know, and across the street. So nice, man. Yeah. So so we spoke about E and all that and. Mm -hmm. You guys have a personal relationship. Absolutely, that's my brother. Outside of, like, he's right. my brother as well. Like, Absolutely. outside of the barbering, how how is your relationship with him, and how do you how do you feel about the achievements that that all the successes that he's done in the past 20, 20 something years as he's he's in in Mike and Joe's, bro? Because it's mm -hmm. twenty two years now he got mm -hmm. he owns Mike and Joe's. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, twenty two. He got he got a good he's got a good run going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it does. Uh, first of all, he the one thing I love about Eric, he always gives you your flowers. He always does to me. He does yeah. always gives me credit. Thad taught me this. I didn't do anything for Eric. I just opened the door and gave him a chance. Mm -hmm. I needed his help because Mike was getting older and. Like I said, I was outside. I wasn't in the shop. Yeah. And it wasn't fair to the customers. It wasn't fair to Mike. And I was skeptical when he walked up them steps. He didn't have no shears, yeah. no nothing. Yeah. He had a kid yeah. in his arms. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> and like I always tell everybody, he's the hardest working person I ever met. Definitely. He stood over us when he didn't have haircuts and just learned. Mm -hmm. He wanted to learn so bad. I've never met anybody that wanted to learn so bad. And when I was sold Mike and Joe's by Joe, Joe knew I didn't have a lot of money at the time, and we didn't go through a bank. We did a handshake, and it was for a cheap price. When it was mm -hmm. time for me to sell the barbershop, Eric and I did the same way. We didn't go to a bank. Mm -hmm. We didn't shook do nothing. Hands we shook hands and said, yeah. you hit me when you, when you got it, and yeah. I'll tell you when you're good. Like real men. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's my brother. I always say this. No matter if I have a TV show, a movie, an award, whatever I do in my life, my, the proudest thing I am in my life is the, the accomplishments of Eric. Mm. Even more so than my accomplishments, yeah. and I mean that. Yeah. Um, you're talking about a kid from Pear Street. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He could have went down the road I went, mm. but he went the opposite way. Yeah. And he does everything right. Absolutely. Uh, he's a great mentor to barbers. Definitely. He's a great mentor to family men. Family. Definitely. A family man. I don't know a family mm. man like Eric. Yeah. A hustler. People confuse the word hustler with drugs no, all the time. No. A hustler is somebody who's just going to go get it. He's going to go yeah. get it. And Eric goes, gets it. By I mean, all means. Absolutely. Yeah. And he got that. I guarantee you he'll tell you he got that from the early days of yeah. Mike and Joe. <laughs> I showed you how to do it the wrong way, and he did it the right, the right way. way. And that's why I'm forever, like I said, no matter what I accomplish in life, my proudest thing that I've done was leaving Mike and Joe's with him. Yeah. Because I had taken Mike and Joe's good name and turned it a little infamous for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he took it back to what it should be. A well-respected shop that helps the community. Definitely. That's been there for 60 years. And really, the stuff he does with the show, the yeah. barbers, it's on the, it's on the cutting edge of... Magazines, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's unbelievable. Uh, uh, was that the the Spanish? Unbelievable. He got he he. The Apollo magazine, the one yeah, Apollo in. magazine, yeah. the lineup uh, yeah, the magazine. Lineup. Yeah. Yeah. He's on a few. My man who's in jail yeah. in New York <laughs> said, "Is this your boy?" And yeah. sent me a picture. And he said, He's in the magazine. Yeah. Now. We're looking at yeah. him up here. And I was yeah. like, "That's my guy." He. Yeah. So no, I'm beyond proud of Eric. Yeah. Beyond proud. I mean, I, I've noticed you. I've noticed you. Like you mentioned earlier, you didn't fall out of love for barbering. No, not at all. And I noticed you. You, you, everything that we do, you're always, even on social media, you giving us, you give us our flowers all the time. Mm -hmm. Yo, keep pushing, right. do your thing. I'm proud of you guys Absolutely. all the time. You, you, so you kept an eye on what's the barbering life it's, still. It, it's on my hand. I'm always going to keep an eye there. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, no, absolutely. I still, to this day, I, you know, obviously you guys are 12 or six, so you're my family. You and, and Eric and Jay and Gil. I'm always going to support you guys. But I do. I try to pay attention to what's going on, you know, in the city with other barbers and stuff like that mm -hmm. as well. So what you think, what what you think barbering has become now wow. versus back then? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's leaps and bounds, obviously. Um, Eric will tell you when, when we were at Mike and Joe's, it was $10 a haircut. There was no appointments. You come in on Saturday morning, there's 40 people standing there. 
Those people aren't going to get haircuts till 3.30, yeah. but they're going to stay in that barbershop Until all day. Until they get that haircut. Social media, mm. technology, and, and really, I hate to say it, 2020 COVID opened people's eyes up to really what barbering is. Yeah. Bar barbering is an art form. Fact, and right. it... it, it it always Over been. the years, it's kind of been treated like that. I remember there's a, a famous move. I think it might be Crocodile Dundee where they're in New York City. And everybody's huddled around the barbershop window yeah. watching this guy do this crazy hair, mm. like a punk haircut in the yeah, 80s. Yeah, yeah. It's art for him. Yeah, yeah. And by doing these shows like that Eric does and, and the Connecticut show and the shows you guys be going to, it's putting it out there for what it really is. It's art. Yeah, you, yeah. you can't just... Decide I'm going to be a barber one day. You better have some talent and you better work on your talent um, if you want to be successful. But no, it's it's so different now. Yeah, I, I yeah. love where it's come to. I love what Eric's doing with it. Some of the other guys that have shows and stuff like that. You had that show on the island, yeah. which is, I told you a million yeah. times. Congratulations on that. Yeah. I thought that was that so was dope. dope. Man. Um, it's just and, you know, it's kind of a cliche, but you say it. A lot, you know, I saw somebody just had it on there. Of course I'm a felon. I'm a barber or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Barbering has done a lot yeah. for for people that maybe did take the wrong path and, mm -hmm. and now want to take the right path. And um, sure. I can't think of too many other occupations that, you know, there's always that thing on the application that so you've been convicted of a crime. I've never seen that mm. in a barbershop. Yeah. They don't answer that question. Yeah. Mm. Can and, cut? No, and no application. No <laughs> steal? No <laughs> interview. Come on. Yeah. None of the you know? interviews. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. so you, had, you had a little rough pass, bro. Like, I've heard a lot of stories <laughs> being in the news articles uh, <laughs> plenty times. Not on not on uh, second, third page, no. on the front page. Front page. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Um, would you change any of that? No. No. Any regrets at all? No. Um, I don't think I'd be in the situations that I'm in today without that past. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? If I didn't have those stories, um, you know, I maybe, I don't know, things might have been different. Right. But no, I don't have any regrets. Um. The only regret I would have of it, there's a great quote from Malcolm X that said, there's no shame in being a criminal. There's a shame if you remain one. Mm. Um, I'm trying to take the things that I learned by going on. I was raised by two very good parents. I made the, my wrong decisions were all on, based on my own. I ventured off and went down the wrong road. I'm just trying to maybe tell my story so maybe some more kids that were going to go down that road go down the road I should have or the road that Eric and that you, I see you guys and stuff going down where you're trying to do things the right way. The positive. Positive yeah. way. And, you know, uplift the community and not tear it down. Even though, you know, when things were, we're doing bad things, you still do things for the community. But in the end, you're tearing the community down. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know. And now you got a story to tell. Absolutely. Absolutely. And... I know you you've in a mix of uh writing a, a series. Mm -hmm. You got okay. you got a few things mm -hmm. cooking up right now as well. Um you yeah, recently you did you recently did a a movie uh Snack Shack was That's it? That's my partner's movie. Uh, yeah. Your partner's Adam, movie. Yeah, yeah you mm -hmm. you took part in that movie uh and you got you something co else. You co-wrote that or That's his movie. Um Adam. When I was living in Los Angeles 20 years ago, I had met this uh, gentleman by the name of Adam Remeyer, who is a brilliant guy. He's a friend of mine, too. Um, he's a Sundance Award winning film director and writer. And um, we just had a friendship. He would do movies, and he would once in a while call me and say, hey, does this sound right if somebody would say this to somebody in the street? And I'd be like, no, that sounds fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Here's how they would say it. And he knew a little bit of my story, and he would always say, hey, if you ever want to give me a shot, we could do something with your story. It's crazy. Yeah. And I said, you don't even know the half yet, brother. <laughs> and um, like I was telling you, in, in the late 2000s, you know, in the last five to six years, I had some incidents that took place. And, um, you know, you start to think. You're getting older, like, what's going to be your legacy left? Am I going to be one of these people? The series that we're working on is called The Juice, and it's basically a true story about, you know, Mike and Joe's and illegal mm. gambling and the things that happen. Um, you know, you start to think, am I going to be just one of those legends or ghosts that they whisper about in the alley, like, oh, y'all used to do this. <laughs> and it wasn't really the legacy I wanted to leave. I wanted to leave a legacy where maybe I did do bad, mm. but I brought 
a TV show back to the city and used the city to shoot the TV show, mm-hmm. used the people in the city to shoot the TV show, and um, try to turn it around. I mean, my thing is this. If you're a kid and you're doing what I used to do, I can guarantee you one thing. You're going to get caught or you're going <laughs> to get killed. These I guarantee days, it. Yeah, these Absolutely. days you are. Uh, Absolutely. We were brilliant, and they caught all of us. We were geniuses, uh, and they caught all of us. They're going to catch you. Or you're going to get killed. One way or another, right? One yeah, way or another. Absolutely. Yeah, one way Game another. ends one way or another. No, yeah, definitely. definitely. It, it, it always will. So, so take that right route, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, what, that's basically what, it, what the juice is and some of the other projects I'm working on. Another project called Money Tree Park um, with a friend of mine who's incarcerated. Um, basically the same thing. Stories of real stories of people that went left and, yeah. you know, now trying, up, man. now trying to bring it back to... To zero, yeah. so into reality. Man, I'm excited, I'm excited yeah. for this, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying to catch yeah. that, man. Yeah, cool. I'm yeah, definitely man. excited because I, you, you, they're gonna be mentioning Mike and Joe's and <laughs> Mike and Joe's was the, the epicenter of the story, <laughs> the, juice, the story yeah. of Juice. You know uh, what I mean? Like, bro, it's, that's it's dope, man. It's, <laughs> it's deeper than what we're gonna get into in the podcast, but you know absolutely, what I mean? we're yeah. gonna we're gonna let people, <laughs> we're gonna leave them. There a was a tease. Look, there was a time before everybody was on their phones on FanDuel and DraftKings, which I'm sure if you've been to Mike and Joe's or if you know me, you know all about. There wasn't those things. There was a bookie, there was a bookmaker, yeah. and that's what you that's who you call. <laughs> and unfortunately, that was what was more important to me than the mm. barber shop at the time. Um, now. Looking back on it, it was the wrong decision. You know, this this comes with some cool shit. You get to see a lot of stuff, and you get around mad girls and, and crazy shit like that. But in the end, like I said, there's only two things that's gonna happen: you're gonna get caught, and you're gonna go to jail, or you're gonna die. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So I guarantee you, that's what's blessed, gonna happen. man. Blessed yeah. to be here, then. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? For sure. We was just talking about that. Yeah, right bro. We for sure. Like, for sure. Anytime, anytime, anybody running around the streets doing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Things we ain't supposed to be doing. It's right. a blessing to still be here right. and be able to be with your family, your loved ones, and your, you know, your There's friends. There's a lot of people who just I, I call it toe dipping. They'll dip their toes in the yeah. street, and it ends bad. Yeah. yeah. There's not too many people. To jump in the pool like leap, I did, leap and, right and, in, and, and, and get back out. The leap of faith. Uh, you know, there's too there's too many people that drowned in that pool. Uh, I was one of the lucky ones that got out. That's what's so, up, man. See what happens. That's dope, man. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear the story. You know what I'm saying, uh, you know, what I mean, to see it on the big screen, or you know, what I mean, where it may Absolutely. be, because then it, it's enticing to see. You know, the history. Of course, there's going to be some history of writing in there. Definitely, there's, you know, For Mike sure. and Joe's involved in there. Absolutely, and uh, some of the stories you got to tell, man. Some crazy stories. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 so do you see yourself pursuing this career, being a writer? Uh no, and we had talked about this earlier. I I'm not a writer. I'm not a trained writer. I never went to school. I barely got out of high school. Um I'm just a guy who has some good stories, has a good memory, and you know, can tell some pretty decent stories. Yeah. I was it. blessed to get with a partner who's able to take my stories and put them into script form, and, mm. and that's been a blessing. But no, I, I see, my goal is this, I wanna see Juice all the way through, and maybe do one other project, um, like I said before, with my, my friend John Spry, who's doing Life in Elmira. Um, there's another project, Money Tree Park, with him. But after those two, no, you can, I'll send you an address. I'll be on an island. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come and get me. Yeah. <laughs> no, not come and get me. I won't be doing nothing wrong. No, Just no, come no, and yeah. see me. Come see me. Come see absolutely. me. Absolutely. Yeah. How yeah. over said it was somewhere right. warm with no mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. I'm definitely coming over. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're a little, you know we're a little Mary Jane and we, we be all right. You know what I mean? We'll be all right. But, but yeah. um, <clears throat> Red and PA, Juice, man, your, your story, like, Every day I hear something new. I'm sure if you're in there, you do. I hear <laughs> something new about... Because like I said earlier, we met through E. Uh, and when I met him, uh, it was the barbering. It was like, all right, he was he was owner of this. And, and you know what I mean? And, but he used to every, cut hair, but there was some other stuff. Every day he'll give me a piece. Like, uh, yeah, 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 Fat did this, did this too. You know what I mean? He wouldn't give me the full story. But he's like, yeah, but you know... It, the history of this barbershop and he uh, is wild. I, I, like I said, I've been to a million other barbershops, and there's so many great barbershops with stories. I really truly not, believe that not like that, my that 1206 goes. has yeah. a story that is uncomparable to any yeah. other that I've ever heard. It's in my crazy. Life. It's crazy. So, yeah. So present time, mm-hmm. what are some things that 
you have accomplished other than what you got going on now mm-hmm. what are some, what are some other things that you accomplished after stepping away from the barbershop i know you you moved to you were living in i was in, in california Cali. a couple different times um <clears throat> and in the back then it was the legal marijuana business in california it wasn't legal other places yeah. so um i you know i had uh messed around with that for a little bit um did some writing did some traveling and then like i said juice came about right around when covid hit and then we had covid we got a deal for juice and then we had the strike hollywood strike for nine months so the first three years of juice we've had covid strike <laughs> And now we're back in business, so hopefully <laughs> time to get the ball rolling absolutely. again, man. Right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But, but as as far as things that accomplished, like I said, I did a lot of bad in this city. I did do some favors for some people over the years, and those people that I did those favors for, I like seeing them succeed. And obviously, Eric is right at the top of yeah, that list. But yeah. there's some other guys also in this city too. That right. I love seeing succeed. What are what are some things you would you would Love to see change in the city of Reading. Um, I mean, you're going to say this about any city. You just want to see everybody get along. You know, mm-hmm. people don't realize that when you come together, we're stronger than everybody. We're stronger than the government. We're stronger than, if we would all just come together with one yeah. mission, we would be fine. Right. Um, Reading's always going to be Reading. <laughs> I'm a fool if I think I'm going to say something. People are going to stop killing each other. Start selling no, it's not, going to, it's, it's, it's that's not the, going to happen. That's what this city, you know, that's part of the city. Yeah. Um, ain't no city like but that, you know, though. Let's just get that right. Ain't no yeah. city where everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah no, no, no. absolutely but you, not. But you know, sometimes with a message, it, right? with a message, some yeah. some people might might listen and, and be like, damn. And that's the message uh, I, I'm hoping to portray with Juice. <laughs> like, look, here's what went wrong, but I'm going to bring it back to the community and try to do something good here. Mm. You know, the first 40 some years I was on this planet, I wasn't doing any too much good shit. Um, I'm hoping that the last bit that I'm on this planet, I can leave, um, you know, a pretty good legacy. Mm. Um, and uh, that legacy, all obviously, with, uh, where it always comes back to this 1206. That's where it all started. Yeah. yeah. So, Mike and Joe, baby. Leave an leave leave imprint, right? The imprint yeah. you leave here when you know what I mean? And the opportunity that, that's going to bring to, to, to Red and Two, you know what I mean? Because he was talking about he wanted. He wanted to get more of the city involved in that film. Yeah, I don't want to. You know, one of the deals that we had made um, was that when they shot here in Reading, that I, I didn't want to use extras. There's no reason to pay people to come from New York or Philadelphia or Los Angeles to be in the background. Yeah. Pay people from this city. Right yeah. here. Yeah. They're the most authentic people you're going to see. I want to portray this city the way it is. Yeah. So let's show the people of this city. Yeah. Don't bring me fucking people that don't live here that are getting paid, you know, $100 a day to just be in the background. Uh, to walk around in the background when you got people out here. We got a whole block of full people right here on the 1200 uh, block. Pay them. And that's uh, real. So. That's real. Yeah. So, Mr. Thad, mm-hmm. what's your future looking like after, after Juice and... Like you, you say, you gonna be on the island. You gonna be on the island somewhere, right? Like I said, I, I wanna, um, as you guys know, I wanna um, to get juice out. I wanna get Money Tree Park out, and um, from there, just take it easy. Like I said, I, I wanna sit back and watch guys like you, guys like Jay, obviously guys like you that are doing stuff in the city that is new. I don't know any other podcasts that are coming out of Reading. You guys are new barbers in Reading. I love sitting back watching that stuff, and I hope I can, you know, spend the rest of my time sitting back watching, watching that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's some. There's some. There's a lot of talent. Anytime you have a city that has some problems, you're also going to have a lot of talent that comes out of that city. And Reading's always had a lot of talent, a lot of people that have been talked about. I mean, a little bit of that is with Juice too. Yeah. Talk about some of the ghosts and the phantoms of this city. That if you're from the city, you definitely hear about them. But if you weren't from the city, you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. And there's, there's some amazing people that have come from this city. We need we need to get a, a, a TV series for E. <laughs> right after, right after Juice. You know what I mean? He just needs one on Comedy Central. Yeah. Comedy, yeah. Comedy Central just yeah. from the barbershop and he's good to go. Yeah. Real shit. All we need, all we that, need is some cameras that, in the barbershop. That's the name right there from the shop. From the shop. <laughs> from the shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all mm-hmm. my boy. From my the boy. shop with E Baba E two eight. Barbara Lenz been saying for a minute, yo, let's get some cameras in here. I'll come in here yeah. and it's just a film y'all for a day. And bro, right. Believe me, we could we could make a, a uh, uh, a hundred and something. <laughs> That's what people always say to me. You know, 
Yeah. How, did, how did you get into writing? How, how is it to write? Really, I just have a good memory. Mm -hmm. If you talk to Eric, like you said, he, he tells you little bits of stories. I could write a book a day yeah. from, the, from back from in the, the day. day. Yeah. Yeah. For real, a book a day I yeah. could write. I could I could imagine, bro. You you said five times you've been on on the I mean, on the front on page, the page, bro. Like, and not for anything good. Like I said, I could I could only I could only not for imagine. Any good recognition. I could only imagine like, and, and back in the day, back in the nineties, it was like more freedom than anything. You know what I mean? So. You could get away with us with certain things. You could, mm. but you know, eventually, like you said, you're gonna get caught up. I mean, nowadays it's impossible. There's cameras everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. If you think you're gonna be a successful criminal nowadays, <laughs> you are fucking bananas. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. They have the best technology. There's a million. There's everybody out here. Not, you do something uh, wrong, or you fall at a mall. Everybody they, got their camera phone out. They pulling that phone right out. Right you away. go, you go do something crazy. Well, they're just gonna record yeah. it. Find something else to do. Find that other lane, whatever mm. your lane is. Like for you guys, it was barbering. For, for you, it may be this. Find that lane, that yeah. positive lane, and go with it. Put yeah. a put a thousand percent into it. Definitely. Eric put a thousand percent into that shop. And into you the, see the you see the result. And into books. I put a thousand percent into the street. Yeah. And you see the results. Yeah. Mm. I'd much rather be in his shoes than my shoes. Yeah, exactly. You know, he, he can go to sleep got. at night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still have problems sleeping at night yeah, yeah, once yeah. in a while. But nah. he, he, um, like I said, he, there's there's nobody in this city, and maybe I'm a little biased because it's at, at Mike and Joe's. There's nobody in the city that's done what he's done for barbering. I, I've been here. I've been here maybe 13 years now. Mm. Yeah. And... I have not come across any shop owner no. or any barber. And, and Redding's funny like that. Sometimes Redding, they do give you your flowers. There's a mm. lot of people here that do. And, some. And there's some, some that don't. Yeah. And mm. that's the only thing that sets me there. Eric is so humble. Yeah. I mean, you guys both know him for a little while. Eric has a lot of sons in this town. Yeah. And he don't, mm. he don't mention it. Nope. You know? Yeah. And... Uh, He's super humble. I've never been sometimes as humble as him. I, I try to learn from him. He's super humble about what he's done for this. Bro, we I've walked into places here with, with E, and the amount of people, it's like when you went to St. Croix with me, that you yeah. was like, yo, everywhere they know you, bro. Yeah. But I walk into stores, into bars, the first person, yeah. they, yo, E, yo, what up, yo, yeah. come let me, yo. Bro, isn't he like cele he is a celebrity? The love here, is there. Ready, the love bro. is there. And the love like, is for real. real. Yeah. For you know real. what I mean? That's Facts. the part that, that about Eric that I love. The love is real. You can go places with me and you're gonna get that same love, but a lot of that love ain't real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of that love is I just need to watch my P's and Q's with him and yeah. act like I like him. Yeah. That yeah. love for mm -hmm. they don't love me. That love for Eric is real. Original. He love. did stuff for their families. He cut your hair when you were down on your luck. He flew to where you were getting married. He has a story for every customer that's in there. He, he knows does. the whole damn family. He does. Um, and that's why, like what you said, the love is real for him, oh, and I love yeah. seeing that. He builds he builds mm. real, real relationships yeah, with absolutely. people. Mm. And you know what? Like he, he always says, it, a customer pays for your lunch. A client pays your mortgage. Yep. Mm. And he had the relationship he has with people. It's not a customer and barber relationship. Believe me, it's not. It's a personal, personal relationship man. that he has with everybody that comes yep. in that barber shop, and he's been doing that since he came and worked for me twenty five years ago. Yeah, he didn't come equipped like that right out of the box, but he didn't take long for him to realize. Okay, this is how you do it. Mm. And from then on, he just. Yeah. I always say this. He came to the shop. He could only fade. He didn't know how to cut with the scissors. Mm -hmm. Didn't know how to cut with thinning shears. Was okay with the clippers. If it wasn't a fade, it was a, within six months of him being there, he was the best barber in that in that shop. In that shop. And you're talking about Mike, who's been cutting hair for 50 years, and me, who'd been cutting that for a decade at the time. Yeah. In six months, he was the best person in that shop because he dedicated his every team. hour he was yeah, awake time. to learning and getting better. Yeah. So... And believe me, we go we go to shows. You see, yeah, yeah. you see it too. We go to shows, and it's not like he stopped learning. Nah, nah. He put on his own show, but in the nah. meantime, I'm gonna go to all your shows yeah. too. Nah. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you always got to be a student to the game, and no matter what you do, you know what I'm yeah, saying. For we sure. all we all continue to learn each and every day, and that's yeah. where you know, like you said, we have to be humble in whatever we may do, yeah. so we can learn from each other. Yeah. You know what I mean, I think that helps each other grow. 
like we always say on the show here, man, is you know what I mean. A lot of times you don't receive the love from the people around you, mm-hmm. from the city. Mm-hmm. You now sometimes it feel like that. It's strangers. You know what I mean? It's strangers, correct? You know, what I mean? And it's like people you know, you've been up around from the sandbox. Sometimes they don't show you that love at all. Right. It's strangers. It be it be people on the other side of this phone that you never met in person yeah. at all, hyping you up. Yeah, like yeah. yo, bro, keep, keep, keep doing, doing your thing, thing man. Yeah, I'm man. Wa- I'm watching you, yo. Yeah. You inspiring. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, I don't even Big know facts, this man. person, but. Thank you, bro. Like mm-hmm. so, that- so in turn, you take that and like you said, things that I do and I see Eric do and you do, support your people, bro. Facts. You understand what I'm saying? Facts. I, I met you recently. I don't know you that well. Yeah. You're part of my family, though, because yeah. you're 1206, so I'm going to support everything you fucking do. Yeah. You know? I don't care yeah. if you're throwing a car wash. And yeah. you and Eric are gonna be in, in speedos out front of Mike and Joe. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna pull up. Yo, and he's down for that. Yeah, he might be down. It for might that. not make no money. <laughs> I don't know it if they make no money. money. It might not make no as money. As long as he gets to show up that body. <laughs> no him, yo. He about to say, no, he ain't gonna be support. eat barbies going Eric the body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? You gotta um you gotta support your people. Nah, facts. Yeah, that's man. that's why I do like when when there's young barbers like mm-hmm. that that are in um American Academy or RBI or the Burks School, they'll hit me up or even start in barber and they'll be like, "Yo, bro, I just started cutting hair. What advice you got?" I don't, I don't treat them like, "Nah, bro, I, I'm a, I'm a, yo, do this, do that, don't do this, mm-hmm. don't do that." You and, know that what I mean? and that's what the good thing with me, I can tell you exactly what not to do. Yeah. Don't do this shit that yeah. I did. Pay attention and do this. Yeah. You know. And you have no idea, like you said, how much that means to them kids. I mean, pop up to the school sometime, let them shape you up or something, bro. Yeah. That means the world to yeah. somebody who's just starting out. Yeah. You know? Bro, so, and they, they and they do, and they show the genuine love. Yeah. They show the genuine they gonna love remember back. That. Yeah, like, they'll, I, I got this one young kid, like, I used to cut his hair five, six years ago. He was a teenager. I always, I, I used to go support him. He was a boxer. I go to his events and stuff like that. He's just started cutting hair two, three years now. I haven't seen him for a while, but the past two years that he started cutting hair, I'm like, damn, he's cutting hair now. So I hit him up, like, yo, where you at? This, that, and the third. And he hit me. He's like, yo, I'm coming to see you. You mind if I come and shadow be, uh, shadow around you, uh, watch what you got going on? And I'm like, yo, bro, come over here. Like, I- I'll teach you. Don't worry and about it. And that's the best learning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, everybody goes to barber school. Everybody does this and that. But I can tell you this: the, the way you learn is being in that shop, and you have to have somebody like I had, Frank, D. Maria, Joe's son. To, you know, just get behind you and, yeah. and tell you, look, you're gonna fuck up. Got to get that mm-hmm. hands Someone, on. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna fuck up, but get in there and do it. And this is how you do it. And when you're a mentor to somebody like that, that means the world to people. Definitely. So, definitely. Yo, my God, Thad, <laughs> we appreciate you for yeah, coming definitely, to. Definitely. No Thank limit, no boundary Appreciate podcast, no man. Is is we we gonna have you on the podcast again right after Juice? Right. You know what I mean? Because Absolutely, we, I would love we, that. So if you can, real quick, if you can, um, where should people be keeping an eye out for? You know, for the release, for when it's dropping, or just so it in the works. <laughs> If if you can't no 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna put it like this Um, one of my mentors growing up was a gentleman by the name of Joe Argentano Joe Cupcakes Um, he's also doing 18 years right now and Joe always used to tell me never perpetrate simply demonstrate silence is the realest loudest noise you could ever make so I tend to let my actions do the speaking. If you want to catch up with me or find out what I'm doing, y'all know where I'm at. Yeah. Um, And if you don't, you'll see my actions and um, you'll know where to find me. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. You'll hear about it. That's how you end that. That's how you wrap it up. You know what I'm saying? You'll hear about it. (laughs) You'll hear about it. Yo, but again, Thad, we appreciate you for coming out to No Limit, No Boundaries, bro, and and sharing your story with us. Definitely, definitely. We're going to have you here again. Cool. Definitely have you here again. I'll bring some some of the people from Juice. Yeah, please. Please do that, man. Yo, we here with No Limit, No Boundaries. We got my man Thad in the building. We signing out.